Hello, everyone, and welcome to All Ears at Disney Podcast, Episode 3. We are in the second episode of our three-part series about the Disney College Program. Today's episode, we'll be talking about your Disney College Program arrival and first days on the job. First, though, before we head into our main segment, we're going to have a little bit of a news update. Um, Nico, what have you got for us? What's up, guys? It's Coworld here, and I want to start it off uh, with a topic that's still fresh in my mind and the mind of Disney fans, ever, Disney park fans everywhere. It's, of course, the price increase for annual pass holders. Um, they announced it a few days ago, but this is still still fresh to me, um, especially because I'm going to start it off. Uh, you may be wondering why I'm so upset by this. Not being a pass holder myself. I was actually thinking about getting an annual pass just one day before they announced the price increase. Um, It was when I actually calculated out all the prices of how many times I need to go, how many times I think I'm going to go next year, and if it'll be worth it. Um, And then the next day, they increased it. The Platinum Plus Pass will run you $1,219 for out-of-state residents. It was pre- previously 994. Yikes. And then the Platinum Pass, which most people get. This is gets you admission to all four of the theme parks in Walt Disney World with no blockout dates. That's going to cost you now $1,119. Previously $894. That is a $225 increase. And that's, uh, if you price it out with taxes, it comes out to 100, 1191 and 74 cents what's your take on that um well i've noticed that people are so mad about it everywhere i've been on social media a lot because i've been very interested in everyone's reactions about this um i have seen so many people decide not to renew their annual passes so many yeah, people no, I, we're just I've like seeing people like putting like comments on facebook and saying We've been paying pass holders 15 years, and this is just the last try. I can't, we can't afford it anymore. Yeah, this is what like when you think us. about like a family, I think of like an average family of four mm-hmm. paying four thousand over four thousand dollars. Well, like four four thousand five hundred dollars mm-hmm. or four thousand. I don't know. That's that's almost five thousand dollars with the taxes. Yeah, for a family of four or whatever. Yeah, and your passes. So I've also heard a lot of people um, say time to go to Universal. No, so no. people are universal increase their, their prices APs. they increased their prices this year too so yeah probably not as significantly no I this think. is as far as i know this is the largest increase in annual passes in history mm-hmm. um yep i've heard that too and it's because of galaxy yeah Edge. so that's that's another <laughs> interesting thing um the day before they announced this price increase on june 18th of 2019 they announced disney announced that they're going to do uh, annual pass holder previews mm-hmm. for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. People are rumoring around uh, August 11th, which is a decent amount before it opens on August 29th of this year. Um, so that's a mm-hmm. super super special event that they're going to do for annual pass holders. But, of course, Disney comes in and announces the price <laughs> increase, which they didn't even warn anyone. They just said, here that's it is. That's really a kick to the gut right there. That, that feels personal. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. They're it's, gonna lose a lot of people over this. I know it. I don't know what their overall. I don't know if this is gonna benefit them in the long run, but I know that right now they're about to lose so many really, really loyal pass holders. Well, here's the thing. I I was listening to another podcast um, on Mickey Views podcast, and he was saying um, it could be a long term thing that benefits Disney. Uh, they may not be making the money, money right now. Their intent is for these people uh, who are no longer renewing their passes. They're still, they still know they're Disney fans, and they're going to still go to the parks and hopefully still spend that money. <laughs> they're still going to spend that money for one-day park tickets, and it'll add up um, instead of them going a limited amount of times. So Let's say you go like 30 times in a year because you have the annual passes. Mm-hmm. Since they don't have any anymore, they're only going to want to go like five to ten times. Um, when I did the math, once you go about 10.3 times, so I will say about 10 times, is when it makes up to the $1,000, $1,119 uh, to make it worth it. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of times. Yeah. It's a good amount of times. I mean, 
Yeah, that's going. I mean, no one, because no one's going to go for 10 days straight, I don't think. Yeah, no. Because that you'd have to get off of work and out of school if you're at staying the school year. So that that's that that ten times is know. at the starting price at one hundred nine dollars per day. So Disney has the tire system where you can oh. it can range from cheap as going nine hundred nine dollars depending on what type of what time of the season mm-hmm. it is, and then if you times that by ten point three, that adds up to the one thousand one hundred nineteen dollar annual pass price. I don't know if I would do it. I mean, I can't. <laughs> I don't have that money. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, looking into it. Living far away. Yeah. Looking, living far away right now, it's not. Yeah. I, I mean, if you're, it. I think it's worth it if you're a local. If you're, if you live in Florida and you have fizzy access, we live mm-hmm. many hours away, and we have to. I have many. to. I have to take a plane, and or sometimes I drive, but usually it's easiest with a plane. You have to pay for plane tickets. You have to pay for hotel, and it just gets expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason yeah. why I was looking, kind of looking before this price increase, I was looking into possibly buying an annual pass, um, is that I was looking to go about eight days from now until the end of the year, until December. Of course, it lasts 365 days, but as far as initial plans I had for a Disney trip, I was going to go in August, um, from August 11th to August 12th. Um, then I was also looking sometime in December, from like December 27th to January 3rd, around that time. So that's eight days. And I priced mm-hmm. it out. Um, and this is with doing those two days in August, having a hopper pass, and then six days in December slash January, being a regular single park ticket, mm-hmm. that added up to eight hundred fifty six dollars. Mm-hmm. And with with that pat with that price, the platinum before cost eight hundred ninety nine. So it would make sense for me to buy an annual pass. That would have made sense. I'd still have additional time throughout the rest of the year from when I buy the first days of the pass, three hundred sixty five days from then. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. knowing me, I'd probably use it, go to Disney sometime between then, <laughs> um, in addition to those already planned trips. So, but now with that price increase, I don't know if I can afford it. Right. I, I know I can't afford it, so I will just be waiting. And hopefully, <laughs> um, my for my current still people who are still cast member friends at the work there can hopefully get me into the bar because hit us up. <laughs> all you, all you, uh, yeah. If you if you, you want to, if you have a spare. Spirit Chippendale uh, Compass, you want to give us? We will gladly take it. I'll make you um, cookies. <laughs> yeah. And all my all our former CP friends know the pain of paying for a Disney ticket. Have you had the luxury for five months to just walk into the park whenever you want? It's awful. It's awful. I don't know when I'm gonna do it again, yeah. but I'm gonna hold out. I'm holding out. I, I, I mean, we finished our we finished every year again. I still yet to pay for a ticket. I've done two Disney trips since. I don't yeah. know. Have Hopefully. I done one? You've done what? I think I've only done. Yeah, one. he did yep. the one with us in December. Yep, yep. So I haven't paid yet either, and I don't plan to anytime soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for also, and- also for the different options they gave you, there's not just platinum and platinum plus. You can buy Florida residents have a much more, uh, a lot of other options they can choose from. They have the gold, the silver, Epcot after four. Those also increased, but. Um, the highest increase was about twenty five percent increase as far as the prices, which is oh my god, insanity! It's unbelievable. Oh. Well, uh, final word from me is I'm not getting annual pass anytime soon. <laughs> I think I need to be uh, rehired so I can reactivate my main gate. <laughs> yeah, that that would be the that would be a lot better if we just started working for Disney again and had the luxury of just walking in yeah, that, that's, and not paying a thousand dollars to do so that's the goal <laughs> yeah all right that um uh, vents a little bit about frustration with that especially since i was just about <laughs> to buy i'm an so annual, sorry Nico. maybe buy an annual path for that's increase let's move along to our main segment of uh more about the disney college program disney college program discussion part two um yeah let's talk about we're gonna start off with dcp arrival um, then we're going to talk about check-in. Um, so when you get uh, when you get into Disney College Program and finish filling out all your stuff online, you'll get a check-in date. Um, the check-in date varies. You'll uh, between um, there's many different options you can choose from uh, within like a week period. So you get your check-in. You'll go mm-hmm. um, to your housing complex. Uh, you'll get a parking pass for you and your family, so you can move your stuff in. Um, and then you'll go to the clubhouse of your of your complex, and you'll 
go through this whole process where you get um, an info book, you get your picture for your housing ID, and then in your info book, you'll get your key, mm-hmm. and then you'll officially find out where you're living, like what specific apartment. And then, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, what was your experience with that checking in? Um, mine was very, very early in the morning. I think it was like 7.30 a.m. or something like that. I think it was um, 8 a.m., yeah. Really, yeah. And I'd spent the day before uh, in Universal with my dad. So it was actually yeah. one of the most exhausting things of my life to wake up that early and go check in. Um, I just, I, it's very organized. That's the good news is that they tell you where to go. Um, and then you, when you get into the clubhouse, it's basically like you walk in a circle and there are a bunch mm-hmm. of different little booths that you go to and they tell you everything. And it's very like holding your hand to get through, which I deeply appreciated because I was so scared. Um, but then after that, it is definitely kind of a free for all, um, because you don't, you have to follow a paper schedule, um, right. the whole time for every ap- appointment you have, and you're in charge of being to everything on time. So it was hard for me to, um, make sure that I was checking my schedule because I actually had a lot of appointments in one day, whereas everyone else was kind of spaced out. It was hard for me to be moving in while also making sure, oh my gosh, I have an appointment in 45 minutes, mm-hmm. so I need to find this shuttle and this shuttle and this shuttle. Um, so I think it definitely, <laughs> it's 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 stressful. I'm not going to lie and say that it's not stressful because um, it's just, it's a lot to do and a lot to get done. But um, it was really, really cool to get my ID and everything in that one clubhouse area um, and feel like I had a handle on something. Um, and then go move in to my Disney housing complex, which is the first time I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in Disney World. When you got your, so when you get that, when you check in, you get your, what mm-hmm. apartment you're going to be in? Did you kind of message your, like, Facebook yeah. group of where, of your potential roommates and say, did you get yeah. apartment 121? Yeah, I totally did, actually. I, I remember that. Um, did it all, did it all work out? Was it that did. what you were trying it to get? Out. Or did you have some pr- surprise um, roommates? So I actually linked out with, or linked up with two other girls uh, from my school and we were going for a three bedroom six person um in all the complexes we wanted um and uh, so we got vista I, I lived in vista way um and we knew that we were going to end up with some random roommates um three random roommates mm-hmm. so we just wanted to make sure that the three of us were together so when I got my assignment, I made sure to text them and I said, we're in this one. Hopefully you're here too. Um, and they came a little bit later. So I was one of the first people to move in. Um, but one of my roommates actually extended from her last program. So she was already there when I got there and she was completely moved in. Oh, really? um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, my friend Jessie, who worked at Soren, she was already set up and moved in. And I'm pretty sure she left that day because she didn't really want to get in our way while we were moving in. Um but yeah, so I was I was the first one to move in, um, and then once I found out that the other two girls that I wanted to live with were in my housing complex, that was very exciting. I felt a lot better after that. <laughs> yeah. um, mine was a little more of a surprise. We, my, my I, right. I went up with three other guys, so we were hoping for commons, four person, two bedroom. That did not happen. Uh, we got our we got commons. Oh, we we got commons. We're super pumped so about hush. that. <laughs> Um, but it was a six person, three bedroom. So we're like, oh, we got three random roommates. Right. Um, I mean, two random roommates. So we're like, all right, that'll be interesting. Hopefully they're cool. <laughs> I remember like we had our uh, group text going and we're like, we're like, has anyone met the new kids yet? Are they cool? <laughs> the um, new kids. <laughs> and, and like, I remember Arthur saying, yeah, we, uh, I met them. They seem really nice. So I'm like, oh, cool. Um, and they moved in around the same time. I think they had the same checking time as me. At least one did Brian. Mm-hmm. I remember meeting his family and John came along a little later. I met his family mm-hmm. and they had turned out being two of some of my closest of my roommates. Uh, they were super cool. So it worked out really well. Yeah. Um, we had the slightly cheaper rent with the six person. So that was cool. Um, Way to go. <laughs> one thing I do remember with moving in and a little tip for you, when you do move in, uh, bring a lot of cleaning supplies. Ours was oh, pretty yeah. filthy. Um, there was oh, dust yeah. everywhere. It was not clean. Um, yeah, I will definitely talk more about that when I go in more depth than Vista. But Vista is a oh yeah, I imagine it was just even a worse. Gross place. But Commons, yeah. was, Commons was pretty dirty itself. It was very dusty, and uh, good thing my mom always brings her cleaning supplies. So. <laughs> 
All right. Well, your apartment was beautiful. So it was all right. It was all right. <laughs> it was it was pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Um, I think that's a good segue into housing itself. What do you think? Yeah, let's go on to the housing complexes you can live in. Okay, so um, most of this information is as of May 2019, so it's pretty up to date. Um, but there are four different housing complexes you can live in during your Disney College program. Um, there's Vista Way, which is always the cheapest and the oldest. <laughs> um, and then you have Commons and Patterson in Chatham Square. Um, and newly, the future of uh, DCP housing is Flamingo Crossing, but we'll give that its own little info session. Um, so as far as Vista goes, um, rent for a three bedroom, six person is, was, is, I guess, uh, $111 per week. Uh, when I was there, I think it was 108. So not much yeah, different. Raise it a couple um, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Just a few. It comes right out of your paycheck, um, weekly. So you just take yeah, it right out weekly. of your, I mean, I, it's pretty nice. You don't have to worry about mm-hmm. it. Like worrying about putting, giving money to, to Disney housing. Yeah. Like paying yeah, rent on right, time right, and exactly. stuff. Yeah. They do make sure, they do make sure you work enough or they try to make sure you work enough hours so you can pay your rent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you ever run into that problem, not working enough shifts to pay rent? No. You didn't? I did have okay. times when I, my paycheck was very, very poor majority of the time. Okay. <laughs> I had one time where I technically wouldn't be able to make rent. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it was horrifying. I remember scheduling um, or I, I asked my coordinator if I could go talk to him in the office uh, and then <laughs> I sat down in his chair and I was like, I don't know what to do, but I don't know if I can pay rent this week. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. It'll roll over. So like you pay whatever you can. Mm-hmm. And then if next week, um, you, you haven't paid all of the rent for that week, then more will come out of your paycheck. Um, so I did get one paycheck that was $0. Oh, wow. I remember yeah, I might have to work like it. two to three shifts to get that about to yeah get, to get yeah, the, shit, to the amount to play for play mm-hmm. for rent that week yeah and that was um a week that like my family came and another one of my friends came and they didn't schedule me on the days that i could uh, work. i remember that week um, you were freaking out <laughs> yeah yeah that was a bad week <laughs> it was a very rough week um i was super super stressed out because i just i thought that they were gonna like kick me out or something <laughs> i was so nervous i didn't know how it worked um but yeah i would get 108 dollars per week taken out of my paycheck um this i guess i can go ahead and talk about vista for a minute sure. um it's the oldest <laughs> building of all the complexes um it's actually whereas most of the complexes are in their own little subdivision almost um on vineland um vista is across from that in a kind of in a parking lot with a chick-fil-a that's the best part chick-fil-a <laughs> and, is right there it is, that is the best part, um, but there's barbed wire surrounding Vista. Um, it's definitely not in a very safe location compared to where all the other ones are. Um, <laughs> and I didn't mind it. Honestly, I was paying less for rent, which I was really pumped about um, because I would get a little bit more money every week. Um, and I thought, you know, how bad can it actually be? I'm not a very picky person when it comes to living situations. Um, so I thought, yeah, you know, why, why not? I'll be all right. Um, and upon moving in, it's pretty obvious that it hadn't been cleaned. Um, I remember my roommate Janie and I bleached our bathtub maybe six times really? in one night when we moved in because it was just, it was that disgusting. It was horrible. I have videos of us just like exhausted and tired, like just so exhausted and delirious, like bleaching a bathtub. And that was our night. Um, I have a really fun story about Vista, actually, that I tell to almost everyone. Um, in It seems like it's only in Vista specifically. They must do some sort of bulk spray painting um, instead of painting, like like a normal, mm-hmm. <laughs> a normal procedure for painting houses. Um, so there are actually flecks of paint all over the ground. Um, so it looks like your ground is like wet or something all the time. Um, and I saw a post on the Vista Way group when I moved in. Um, somehow a lizard must have been inside of one of the complexes, just like on the wall. And I guess they went to go spray paint that room. Uh, and somehow the lizard got encased 
into the wall. So like it was just the imprint, the 3D imprint of a lizard completely like a pet. covered in paint. So someone literally had a lizard a inside the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a little <laughs> pet. I'm pretty sure they named it too. I can't remember the name, but um, I just think I think that's so funny and pretty accurate for what Vista was like. I mean, my apartment flooded uh, once or twice. I think definitely once. Um, I remember, then, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when it just it just flooded out of the locked door in our apartment. We were like, SOS, we don't know what to do. Um, and definitely our stove slash oven would break a, very often, uh, which is sad for me because I love cooking. Um, and then some of our some of our shelves would like fall off when you opened them or the cabinets, like the cabinet doors were slanted. Um, and it was just, it was always kind of dirty. Again, I really didn't mind it because I kept my area clean. Um, and I kept the kitchen clean and what I was using. So it, it didn't super bother me. But, um, if you're a person who is pretty annoyed by, uh, uncleanliness, I guess, probably don't, don't favor Vista in your options. Um, but if you're pretty flexible and you also want to make a few extra dollars per week, I would, I'd recommend it. I had fun. Uh, it is the party complex. It's the fun. It's a fun yeah, complex. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. It's the party buses go. <laughs> That's probably the biggest, the biggest thing to know about Vista. Um, if you ever hear like Vista way, the party complex, that's actually a thing. <laughs> Vista delay. <laughs> Nico. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> at Vista, <laughs> there are parties basically every single night. Um, and we had we had guys upstairs that had a party literally three times a week, like three times per week. They would have a pregame before they went downtown. Um, so if you live in Vista and you get off of work late at night, like I did, um, when you walk through the complex, it's just like loud music, people drinking, <laughs> um, even when they're not supposed to. Um, you know, people like messing around in the pool area, that kind of thing. Um, so that was for someone who got off of work at 1230 <laughs> and just wanted to go to bed. That was kind of annoying for me. Um, some days I didn't mind it, but when I were, whenever I try to go to sleep at like 130 in the morning and the guys upstairs were just having a rager, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to hit my ceiling with the broom. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I did a couple of times. Um, but it's definitely Vista is this is an experience. It's definitely the cultural hub, I think, of the Disney College program uh, housing complexes. Is it? Did you say it feels it feels the most college? Oh yeah, it of, feels more college than my college. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty. I mean, that's one of the cool things about the, the having these housing complex where all these yeah. college kids live. Is, yeah. Is if you're sad, you're gonna miss the party life in college. Live in Vista. Yeah, that's so true. You know it there. That, or you can live in other complexes and it'll be more chill. But, definitely more chill and yeah. more clean. Um, yeah. I guess that's, yeah, that's about my complete experience. Yeah. Vista. Well, there are three other complexes that are going to also, they're going to be a little bit away from Vista, just like five minute, less than a five minute drive mm -hmm. um, down the road on Vineland. But they're all clumped together. Um, it's going to be Commons, Patterson, and Chatham Square. Um, so those are all, those are all, Similar prices as of May 2019. Commons cost $134 a week for a three person, three bedroom, six person. Patterson mm -hmm. will be $131 a week, and Chatham mm -hmm. will be $131 a week. Yeah, and that price increase for Commons is for your washer and dryer, correct? Yeah, that is a big pro <laughs> about Commons that they have a washer and dryer actually in the rooms for every room. Um, wow, what's that like? It, it was sweet. <laughs> it was very nice. Um, yeah, so let's move on to like some amenities that they have since we're talking about it. Um, apartments come fully furnished. They come with kitchen mm -hmm. appliances, utensils, and dishes. Um, all utilities are included in the rent, so you get water, electricity, waste disposal. Um, and there's also maintenance in all the apartments. Do you, have, you said you said you, things broke down all oh, the time? Oh, I called maintenance yeah. all the time. <laughs> Maintenance and I, we were we were best friends by the end of my program. <laughs> I remember um, John Allen, one of my roommates. Um, he was he was microwaving something in the microwave. I don't know. Oh if God! It wasn't something you weren't supposed to be microwaving, or you didn't cover it. But basically, the microwave exploded. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
<laughs> and like that, and like the button fell off, and we're like, oh. So he told Man and Cyrus, like, oh, this they they just came and they're super nice. And they're like, okay, that's not a problem. This uh, this one's this micro is super old anyway. Let's get your brand new one. So they came and gave us a brand new one that day, wow. which was awesome. That's so nice. So, yeah, there was definitely a reason why I hung out in Nico's apartment all the time and not as much my own. Um, that apartment was beautiful. And <laughs> it had all this like natural light and up-to-date appliances. And um, you had like these yeah. big spaces, like big living spaces, which was ridiculous. So, yeah, yeah I um, I spent a lot of time at Nico's. We had a big <laughs> dining table. We had a porch, which was super nice. Yeah, that was great. It was like a it raised porch. Really nice. Um uh-huh because you were nice kitchen yeah it was like a it was like a two-story yeah of, and we were on the second like, level and mm-hmm. and then that gave us the porch and we had a super yeah. nice location right next to the clubhouse i think apartment yeah. 121 our apartment was great man it was nice <laughs> You would like you would walk into it and it would have like this little mud room and then you'd go up some stairs and yeah. that's where all of the living areas were. And I remember walking in for the first time and being like, Oh, okay, so they're bougie in commons. Great. How did I get put in Vista? Yeah. Well also all the housing complexes have pools, right? All of them have pools. Yeah, so that's nice. Yeah, yeah, the pools yeah. are the pools are really mm-hmm. nice. So I and, never uh, actually went, but I went to my pool t- like twice or three times, I think. Um yeah. and Vista actually used to have a hot tub. But um, ah, yes, that that got filled in quick. The infamous hot tub. <laughs> the infamous hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. But yeah, also they come with um internet, Wi Fi, and then also a cable mm-hmm. package for you. But yeah, that was nice. That um, was nice. I used cable. Uh, let's talk about the future of Disney housing. So for people who are scared of Vista because of Rachel's review of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It's pretty fun, I promise. The good news <laughs> is that they announced that they're, they've already broke ground as of December of this past year, of December 2018, that they're making mm-hmm. a brand new housing complex called Flamingo Crossing. And this thing is going to be yeah. humongous. I was doing some research and I was like, couldn't believe some of the stuff I was reading. It's gonna be two thousand six hundred new, brand new apartments. Uh, three thousand two hundred thirty-five, two hundred thirty-seven thousand square feet. Um, so to give you a comparison. Oh the housing complexes in total of the current four is one thousand five hundred eighty. So they're adding over a thousand more with two thousand six hundred new apartments. Oh my god! Um, it's gonna open in phase two phases. The first phase is supposed to be done by. May 2020. Um, I don't know if they're going to start moving people in or what. Or, and then that's supposed to be completely done yeah. by two, uh, 2023. Um, but this is, it's oh not going to be just housing complexes. They're going to have like a new education and training space. So oh, some of the God. stuff you see in Disney Universe, some of the stuff you see in Disney University is going to move over there, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's rumored that the, the old four, four old complexes are going to be sold by i guess 2023 wait no are you serious that's that's the room that's not nothing's confirmed yet but that's what people are saying i mean it makes sense that they're building over a thousand new ones yeah they are expanding the cause program but um that's really sad yeah (laughs) all right p vista it's supposed to cost 630 million dollars gosh with 10,400 additional beds that's insane. Do you know like where it is? Try to find it. I couldn't find the exact address, but it's right yeah. next to Orange Lake Resort East Village. If you know, if any of you guys in Orlando know where that is, um, but yeah, this looks insane. They're That's they're, unbelievable. they're expanding the college program, which makes sense. It's a great program. And they're they're apartments, not because there was a rumor that they were dorm style. You, but they're apartments From what i read i think they're apartments i don't know it could be dorm style that that could make sense if they're dorm style okay as far as saving money for disney yeah i because i heard a rumor that they were dorm style and then that would create like do we need to I do dining yeah. plans now it could be a whole thing i guess we'll have to i guess we'll have to wait for some new info then yeah uh but they officially broke in as, as of december of 2018 good for them Flamingo Crossing. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Flamingo Crossing. Uh, but the nice thing is with these housing complexes, uh, they have a free bus service. So a lot of people come from out of state or even international. I mean, they obviously yeah. don't have access to cars. So they have a bus services that take you 
pretty much anywhere on property. Good old the intent of that is, <laughs> yeah, Transstar. You want to talk about Transstar? Yeah, I would love to talk about Transstar. Um, so that bus service uh, is called Transstar, and um, it's 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 really nice because they give you a schedule and it'll take you to um, all of all the parks. And all the resorts, I believe. Um, so it's like a yeah, any, basically blue. anywhere on property, anywhere and it takes property. you to where the customer parking is for that. Yeah, because it's intended to take you to work. Yes, yeah. Um, so if you work at Magic Kingdom, it'll take you to West Clock, um, and then if you work, it'll, it'll just basically drop you off anywhere you start a shift. Um, the funny thing about Transstar, though, it's kind of it's like a big joke uh, to Disney College Program participants because it's a little bit unreliable um there have been times where it'll be super late um and then you're kind of freaking out because you you're not at your shift on time and you get in trouble for that but that's not as that's not like too often um but the really really funny slash very not funny at all part is that sometimes they have this tendency to just catch fire yep yeah it happened actually, a couple it months ago in my parking lot oh, yeah. It happened in my parking lot. I woke up one day and looked out my window and there were literally two Transar buses on fire in Vista Way. Um, And it's happened like on I-4 before. And um, even though it's like not that funny of a situation, there have been lots of um, memes that have (laughs) spun off because of it. Um, They're actually really hilarious. So there are definitely pros and cons to Transstar. The cons being occasional fire. Um, But the pros being you don't, necessarily have to have a car um on property and i i did take transstar a bunch of times in the beginning of my program because i was just too scared too, really? to, i was too scared to drive myself anywhere i took it once really once? it was once the casting that's it what did you drive yourself to Why? i mean i i mean i had my car yeah yeah i took it i guess i don't know i I know I didn't take it to cast. I took it to traditions, okay. and that's it. Okay, I was just and those were the nice buses they gave you. Those are like a double decker yeah, ones true. that they took to traditions. I was just uh, the ghost trans star. I was nervous. I was going to drive to the wrong area. I would rather like be taken straight to where I'm supposed to be because yeah, I mean you know me. I'm like always scared of making mistakes. So I was like, I'll just I'll just go with what Disney gives me, and once I understand what I'm doing, then I'll start taking my own car. Um, yeah, I almost took the bus to my first day of work. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, because I didn't know where our costuming building was. Um, I'm pretty sure I asked you where it was, or no, if you, you were there. You over listened to my me asking our trainer where it was, and do you? Because <laughs> I after class, I remember I asked him that was where much was the go, and he kind of he drew me a diagram yeah. of where it's where it was, where cast parking was. <laughs> and I eavesdropped. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I do remember that. Wow, I forgot that happened. Um, yeah, I was. I just. I figured. It's free. Why not utilize it? Um, but then after I took it a couple times, I was like, no, nah, I'm over it. I'm over it. Yeah. It takes a lot more time also. It could it could take like up to an hour to get from like the housing complex to the Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had a few coworkers that would take Transstar after shifts. Um, and so <laughs> Nico and I would walk towards our cars and those coworkers would go sit on the bus bench. It was sad. I mean, I wanted to drive them home sometimes, but um, they would have to wait until, you know, how a normal bus system works, the bus to come grab them uh, from work. So I think definitely if you're if you can't have a car on property, you're gonna be okay because you're gonna have Transstar, um, and you can always like Lyft or Uber if all else fails, or catch a ride from friends. Yeah, um, I mean you'll find you're, you're yeah. out of your roommates. What at least one of them will probably have a car, which is nice. Yeah. Definitely. Um. All right, let's move along to the housing event that they have. Another pro. Um. Yes. <laughs> Another pro of living in housing complex of DCP is you get these exclusive events. Um, some of the events can be like professional development events, like resume workshops and that type of thing, where like current cast members um, who are working like corporate or, or have another different role who have been working for Disney for a long time will come in and give you tips and stuff on people who may be interested in working for Disney in the future. Um, they also have exclusive character meet and greets. You want to talk about that, Rachel? You seem very excited. Yeah, I would love to talk about that. Um, I loved the meet and greets. I thought because I mean I mostly loved them because the first one when we were on our program was Anna and Kristoff, and I've never met Anna and Kristoff together, so I was so excited. Um, the crazy part about the character meet and greets for housing complexes is the lines can get hours oh, yeah. long because it's 
all these Disney college program participants that want to meet these exclusive characters and get they get their hours early to stand in line. And I definitely did for Anna and Kristoff. Um, and I remember like at our housing welcome party, there uh, yeah. was, Peter that, was the, Pan, that was the first and, that and line... only one I did. And that line was like two hours. <laughs> yeah, you were in that line for a while. Yep. And I waited for about two hours too with my roommates. Um, but both Nico and I got pictures with Peter Pan and our roommates separately. Obviously we didn't really didn't, know each other. Didn't know each other. I didn't know you existed um, at that point. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. I didn't know you existed. Because was like the second either. night. Um, I guess we're in there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right. Um, so we waited like two hours for that line, and then Anna and Kristoff, I I must have waited two two, really? two and a half maybe three. Yeah, I waited. Did you watch the movie time. before? I was very excited. Well, also my because they always show they always show a screening, no, so I, they kind of like post on Instagram. Morning. They're like uh, they give you like hints of who's gonna be the this week's character meet and greet. Yeah. They give you a <laughs> hint on it, and then they're like, "Who else is showing the movie before?" Yeah. And then after the movie, the characters from the movie will be there to do meet and greet. Mm-hmm. No, nah, I was only interested in Anna and Kristoff. Hap- yeah, I was only interested in meeting them because I've seen the movie five trillion times. Happen in comments. It was right outside my right outside my apartment. I saw the line going wow, down the block. You probably saw me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I waited a, a really long time. Also, my favorite friend of Anna's was going to be there. Um, and I, did, I didn't like specifically know, but I was oh, hoping really? it was going to be her. And then when I found out it was her, it was like just the best moment ever. I was very excited. Um, yeah, so I love meet and greets. Sometimes they do like breakfasts with pajamas and characters and you go really early in the morning and eat breakfast um, with some characters, which is really cool. I never went to those. I was always sleeping because <laughs> um, mm. they were like six, seven in the morning and oh, yeah. uh, we had work until 1230. So I, I would be dead asleep at that point. Yeah, I mean, they'll be like the cool thing is that the characters that don't usually sometimes don't usually meet in the parks. Mm-hmm. So they'll be wearing like a special outfit yeah, for the yeah. day. So like sometimes they'll have a, sometimes they like have a sports one where they're in their sports yeah. gear and the pajama and one. For, like, graduation, they're in the graduation and their pajama one. So yeah, I mean, it's a cool thing, cool yeah, exclusive that. opportunity that just college program kids get access to. Um, we want to move along to traditions and casting and training. Yeah, heck yeah, let's do it. Um, okay, so the very first thing you're going to do as a uh, Disney Walt Disney World employee is go to casting, um, or one of the first things. So casting is all the really, really boring parts of getting a job, <laughs> but in a really fancy building, and they make it a lot more fun in Disney World. It's like the coolest yeah, building. the coolest <laughs> building ever. They've got like gold statues of characters and stuff, um, and it's beautiful inside. If you... If- if you ever been to if you ever been to Disney Springs and see across the street, yeah, you'll see the casting the building, casting and then and it's also on. You can see it from uh, you can see it from I mm-hmm. floor. Uh, you can see the casting awesome. building as well. So, so um, that's where all the magic yep, officially yep. starts. And that is literally just paperwork, fingerprinting, and um, what's that really official thing called? W four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have to do your W four. Um, show official documents. Um, which is either like your birth certificate, your passport, um, and you also have to show your ID. Uh, so I remember specifically going in, signing a bunch of papers, getting my fingerprints rolled, um, and then learning that my passport expired two days before. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I had to have my birth certificate overnighted to me, um, and then I had to go back to casting. So that kind of sucked. But um, it's literally all the super boring stuff, but they make it so exciting and fun, which is just the most Disney thing ever. So you walk in, you do all these really boring things, then you're just like so ready to go. You're so ready for the next step. Um, so that's, I mean, I, I like to keep casting like a little bit secretive and not show people everything just because it's oh, casting. I don't know. What is yeah, it exciting? I mean, traditions and casting, I like to not tell too many details about because I feel like. You just have to kind of experience it, you know. Yeah, I had no, I didn't know idea what casting even was. I didn't even know, and yeah. I just knew that there was that building, and that you go inside <laughs> and do mm-hmm. some stuff. I only knew from the like hours and hours of DCP vlogs I watched, and even then, no one ever showed the inside of the building. So I only saw the room with the statues, yeah. and then it was, and the Alice in Wonderland door handles, and then that's all I ever saw. Um, so that was pretty cool. So after you finish casting, um, your next big event is traditions. That's and I'm sure one. if you're even, yeah, I'm sure if you're even mildly interested in the Disney college program, you've heard of traditions before. It's that huge seven hour training session, um, at Disney university 
where they take you to the parks at some point too. Spoiler. Uh, Magic Kingdom. I know. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> you ain't gonna spoil that much information about it. it. Yeah, but I figured we're going to talk about it. I mean, we're in a podcast. We're going to talk, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot. I I can save it. No, we can talk about it. I cannot spoil the big one. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Um, So traditions is um, business casual, which everyone always freaks out about their outfits. (laughs) Um, And it's you, you head to Disney University, and that's where your very first big training session happens where you're not learning your specific role but just how to be a disney cast member um i would say it's a brainwashing session yeah the (laughs) the first time you're gonna be in disney university and they're gonna be trainers Mm -hmm. training you and telling you you kind of learn about like the history of the Walt disney company um you learn all the company policies their practices Mm -hmm. Um, there's like different sections you learn throughout the day it's a long day yeah. Um, but you like learn about like, Disney long. heritage, the culture, their values. Um, and you learn just basically mm. all what it's about to be a cast member. Yep. So you do all of that. You've got some. That's where the training happens on like how to pick things up too, right? That's, no, that's, no, that's, that's that next happened? week. Oh, that's you're right. One. You're right. You're right. Um, so this one's just like just the Walt Disney Company. They show you a lot of really emotional oh, videos yeah. about what it means to be a cast member. I definitely cheered up maybe like three times during tradition. Definitely so. was. I cheered up. <laughs> yeah, I was an emotional mess during Fun fact, me and Rachel were um, in the same traditions class by chance. By complete we were. chance. Yeah. I guess it's the first time we ever saw each other. Didn't acknowledge each other. Yeah. Honestly. And we didn't. We didn't discover it until um, Nico watched my very first vlog, actually. Um, and I remember you, you you stopped it and you went, oh, my God, that's me. I was sitting in like, the middle <laughs> table right in the front with my roommate, mm-hmm. my roommate Brian. Yeah. And it was me. Yeah. I, I panned yeah. over the crowd. And uh, so you can see the top of Nico's head in my vlog, which is crazy because we didn't, we didn't know each I was either. scared. I vlogged to that too, and I vlogged casting too, and I was always scared to record there because it's technically backstage, and I'm like, yeah. am I going to get fired for like recording? So I didn't. Oh, the only time I recorded was uh, when this prize came. Do you want to reveal? Do we want to reveal that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, a prize. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, Mickey Mouse, the man himself, comes into the <laughs> class, and I recorded that because I just had to. I'm like, Specifically to give you your name tags and yeah. a pair of ears. Your first pair yep. of ears as a Disney cast yep. member, which is unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, what other company does that? I like, with know. The icon Mickey Mouse. Uh, I know. Into, coming into a training class. Yeah, that's the last thing you do that day too. Um, it's and that's after you get back from Magic Kingdom because they bust you to Magic Kingdom so you can watch some cast members in action actually, uh, which is really mm-hmm. cool. And they have you look for the four keys. Which what are the four keys, Nico? Go. Oh, safety, courtesy, efficiency, show. Yeah. <laughs> so you go to Magic Kingdom um, to look for those four keys in action in specific lands uh, with other people. Um, and that's, I mean, that's so cool. And you get to go down into the Utilidors. Yeah, which... that's your first time you get to go backstage. And that's yeah. the Utilidors, like the backstage Holy Grail. Yeah. If you don't know, Magic Kingdom is actually the second level. Like the part that you go to is the second level of Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the ground floor um, is... Te- like underground in quotation marks um but that's actually the first floor and that's where all the cast members go to make sure that they're not going through lands dressed as other lands or characters aren't just walking through the parks to get to their locations and custodial can throw away trash without having to go through everything um there are doors hidden everywhere in magic kingdom you can just slide through those and then you're underground yeah um, one day one day we'll give our story of our experience in the utilidors when we snuck into there one day we had a uh, good day in the that, was, that was a good day um was a good day. but yeah it is <laughs> it is surreal like uh, the part of disney parks one of the parks parts of disney parks that interests me most is backstage and it was like i was still that was with my first week of moving to disney and Mm -hmm. to see i've done so much research on the utilities but of course you can't find much because you can't take pictures down there you can't take any pictures um so that was it's unbelievable the fact that we got to just drive from disney university about half a mile behind magic kingdom and just drive Mm -hmm. to the back of magic kingdom in a bus and there's a (laughs) a hole in the back that's the entrance to the utility 
Um, Unbelievable. It's insane. It's like its own little town down there too. Yeah. It really is because there are um, there are offices everywhere. There are huge departments where entertainment things are everywhere. There's a barber shop down yeah. there, which we'll talk about more. <laughs> there's a episode. subway down there. Uh, there's a golf cart. Yeah. There's golf carts down there bussing people. Yeah, um, it's seriously it's unbelievable. It's yeah. so and cool. Then there's, so there's, traditions is there's like oh no, there's like ahead. doors that are labeled like if you go through the store you'll be in Tomorrowland and um, yeah yeah and then we my group ended up we started off um in the like, the main street passageway like you know the overflow exit way that they open up sometimes mm-hmm. uh during after half oh, yeah. we popped up there and we actually saw someone cool. was getting a uh, celebrity was getting a vip tour oh, it wow. was um LaShawn mccoy who's the running back uh in the nfl so I reckon he was there for the Pro Bowl that week, and me and Brian, my roommate, like, we're like that's Sean McCoy. <laughs> like, oh, all right, be cool, be cool. And we, yeah, we saw Sean McCoy backstage uh, about to start his VIP tour that day, so that was super cool. Wow, I don't remember you saying that. Yeah. That's wild. That's so cool. <laughs> I ended up in old fantasy land, so um, okay. over by where Prince Charming's carousel is. Um, so did you go through I... Entertainment Hall on the Utilities? Uh, Yes, I walked past it and then like into it a tiny bit. Um, and I actually that day I saw Tinkerbell um, on her way to the break room um, and she was wigged, but she was wearing wow. sweats. <laughs> and she was so excited. She was like, she said, oh, my goodness, are you guys new cast members? And we were like, yeah, we're doing a Disney college program. And she was like, you're going to have such Still a wonderful character. time here. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah. And I almost passed out, I think. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the world went black. I was so excited. I could barely contain myself. Um, I remember <laughs> I remember texting my parents afterwards and being like, I just <laughs> saw Tinkerbell in sweats. It was very exciting. Um. <laughs> anyway, so that's basically traditions in a nutshell. Um, it all happens at Disney University, uh, where you have most of your um, most of your training classes for your specific role, and then how yeah. to be a cast member in general. Um. So after traditions, and that's all over, you'll get your name tag and everything. Uh, but the fun doesn't stop at Disney University. There, <laughs> you get a whole another <laughs> week of in class training there. Um, mm-hmm. so the week following or continuation of that week and then into the next week, you'll get in-class training on, um, different, different topics each day. So there'll be like a f- four day or four keys class where you learn each mm-hmm. key in depth of how to execute them in your role. And um, we're in the same class then too, right? Yeah. We're in the four keys class yeah. together. That was, I think that was, that was the first time I, uh, acknowledged or knew of Rachel, I think. <laughs> Um, because she made a comment in our voice. Was, we're sitting at a different table. She's sitting one next to me. And I remember I remember her saying she was custodial. Um, so I'm like, oh, maybe we'll work together. I didn't know where you were at. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'll know who she is later. Um, but then mm-hmm. she made a comment. Our, our, our instructor was like, um, he was talking about the Super Bowl. This was happening in February, or in, right before the Super Bowl <laughs> in, in January. And our instructor's like, I'm excited for the, I don't really care about the game, I'm excited about the Justin Timberlake halftime show. <laughs> and Rachel, like, basically screams, like, me too. <laughs> I'm so excited. I love JT. And I'm like, oh, all right. And I, like, Both of us are really, a, really big Justin Timberlake fans, if you didn't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. And I took a little mental note. I'm like, oh, okay. Redhead custodial like Justin Timberlake. All right. <laughs> And then uh, later that week, I found out you're working at Disney University. I mean, at Disney Springs. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I might actually get to know her. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I ended up. Uh... And then we specifically found out that we were uh, town center Disney Springs, too, which means yeah. we're literally in the same neighborhood. So I remember <laughs> being like, oh, my gosh. Like, oh. And, <laughs> I, and I, still, I still remember the Justin Timberlake comment. And I remember like during our first week of on the job training, actually, at Disney Springs, I mentioned it. I mentioned it. Just ask me. <laughs> as a talking point <laughs> yeah i was like uh i'm like i basically see the same line. i was like i don't really care about the game but i'm pretty uh pipe pumped for justin timberlake and you're like <laughs> you're basically like oh, i'm a huge fan i'm like oh me too I love justin timberlake. <laughs> good um, line Nico. that was basically that was basically an icebreaker on a lunch break and that, yep. that was the beginning mm-hmm. of it all 
Yeah, it really was. It really was. I was like, oh my gosh, thank God I have someone, so, something in common with someone I work with. Yeah. I'm actually making a friend. It's very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'll go through like different types of training. Like I said, like it'll be operations training. Um, there'll be even mm-hmm. custodial specific operations. That's where we first learned how to probably open a trash bag and pick up <laughs> pick up the items without hurting our back safely mm-hmm. uh, yeah and how to open open the disney trash cans specifically yeah yep. and we learned a different, a different a different tools and our different chemicals we're going to use and all that yeah and then we learned like uh it. the training for um bodily fluids and like yeah. blood spills and stuff yeah. um and I, I had to leave for a second because i got a little queasy pretended i had to go to the bathroom you're in my class that day you were sitting at my table that day yeah I remember, I remember just when I left, talked. I was like, oh my God, they're all going to think I'm weird or something because I'm getting up right now. <laughs> I remember our table was me and Kevin, who were like this, the Disney Springs. We were, I think it was like all Disney Springs at our table except for one girl. Because yeah, me... we were like, oh, Disney Springs, let's sit together. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was, I was like, because um, I talked to, I remember talking to Kevin in a few of the other classes before. So I'm like, oh, I kind of know this kid, I'll sit next to him. And I'm like, oh, the redhead is sitting on the table too. Sweet. Um, but I remember me and Kevin were like the, the quiet kids. And then it was like you, the super excited redhead. And then Garrett, like the the too, too cool for school bro oh, yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. Garrett. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, we did. That was, that was fun. That was a fun class. I really enjoyed it. I was uh, trying my best to curb my over-enthusiasm that day, I remember. I you just, were very I, enthusiastic. I uh, well, I was trying to curb it, okay? I was trying to keep it on the DL. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did good. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. Yeah, but training's not that bad. Being in Disney University is cool. It's like, it's really time fun. To, every time you're able to go in there is, is if you're a cast member. And mm-hmm. all cast members, not just college programs, have to go there for traditions in these training classes. Yes. So Yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool to just be in... I mean, kind of a Disney corporate setting, I guess. Yeah, um, I, mean, I would go out on a limb and say there's no fun or training you're going to go through. Oh, I uh, agree. Disney, <laughs> and training by Disney. I, I mean, mean, for goodness sake, Mickey Mouse shows Mickey up. Mouse. So. Mickey Mouse shows up. Come on. <laughs> I think it um, wins. But yeah, I think that wraps up um, the initial yeah. training, like before specific location training. That's uh, what you learn as far as being a cast member and your specific role. Yeah, in our uh, next episode, we're going to talk about like actually on the job work life training, um, and mm-hmm. we're going to continue our Disney College program discussion part three, our final part. Um, but yeah, we're kind of running out of time. So, there any other final comments about the about tradition, work life, uh, housing? I don't think so. I don't think so. I will say that next episode is going to be really fun um, because we're going to talk about all of the perks of being a cast member and a Disney College program participant. Um, And Nico and I might even give you some of our favorite things and some stories Mm -hmm. about being in the parks as CPs. Um, So definitely make sure to tune into that episode. Um, But yeah, I've had a lot of fun reliving my DCP arrival experience uh, because it seems like so long ago. So it's nice to catch up on it. Yeah, definitely. Um... And hopefully this was useful information. I know you guys trying to apply for Disney College program. More of the story: Don't live in Vista if you don't. If you don't, hey, like like that. <laughs> live in Commons. Want to be? Want to be? Bo- oh, you're funny. You're real funny. You got jokes, huh? A bit of joke. Listen, Vista's okay. Vista's very okay, <laughs> and it's really Commons fun if is sweet. if that's if that's your thing. Yeah, I I will admit to being at your apartment often when i realized how nice it was but listen this is not that bad yeah anyway uh, i do have an exciting announcement about our podcast um and that is that we're now on spotify and itunes and itunes Apple podcast. yeah and um so you can now listen to us in three places or technically four you can listen to us on soundcloud you can listen to us on nico's youtube uh channel co-world that's co-world and you can listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So however you like to listen to your podcasts, you will find us there most likely. Yeah, and please uh, leave a review on uh, on the Apple Podcast. It definitely helps out our channel. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Co-World, where I'll also be posting all our episodes, like the video, mm-hmm. all that, all that uh, stereotypical YouTube stuff. <laughs> 
like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it really helps us out and uh, gets our channel out there for so that we can get more listeners. Absolutely. And thanks so much for listening. We've gotten such good feedback from uh, our family and friends, and we're so excited to be doing this. Um, so shout out to everyone who's been listening to our episodes. We're so excited to be doing this. Yeah, uh, but we're, ra- we're going to wrap it up until next time. This has been Co-World. And this has been Waltzing Around. We're signing off. As always, Co-World is your world. Thanks for waltzing around with us. Peace. Some imagination, huh?